So now this is the second how to read schematic diagrams uh, video. We're going to focus on the diode component, most specifically the rectifier diode. So that is the basic diode right there. Any other uh, type of diode is a spin-off. It works uh, basically the same as a rectifier diode, but uh, will operate with different voltages and stuff. The LED though is one that actually emits light. So actually within the integrated circuit it generates a light usually not visible light but they learned how to uh, make it so that you can get visible light it gets pretty bright LED so that's a diode schematic with arrows coming out of it all the uh, variations of a diode have a variation of the schematic symbol right there so diodes will generally come in either a plastic body which is extremely common for rectifier diodes or a glass body, which is uh, probably more common for other types, but there are rectifier diodes that are glass as well. So here I have them on the board, and we are actually powering this uh, rectifier diode right now. There's a gray stripe right there, and it's a little hard to see. It's easier to see in person, not showing up on camera is good. And here's a Zener diode, but it looks like what a uh, rectifier diode would in glass. And so there's no band over here, the bands on the uh, left right there. So that is the cathode there. So it's important that you know where the cathode is and the uh, cathode, there's usually markings of some kind for it. Uh, if it's most diodes, it's a band, but LEDs, there's uh, there's something else. We'll get to that coming up. But you got to make sure the cathode's on the right side of the circuit, the anode on the other. And that is because they are polarized. So here we have just kind of a very simple schematic positive side of the uh, power supply and negative side of the power supply. That's when the diode conducts most easily and you need a resistor to limit current. Diodes do not limit current once it starts flowing through them. They uh, drop a little voltage, takes a little bit of voltage to get them to conduct and uh, so you choose a diode based on that also. But in any case after that point once you exceed that voltage it doesn't limit current. Current's going to flow freely so you need something else to limit it. So that's forward bias, the direction it's going to conduct. You notice that uh, it makes like an arrow there that points from the positive supply to the negative supply. That's because they used to think current flowed from positive to negative like that. And so we still refer to it like that because one reason is because arrows and schematics tend to point from positive to negative. Now we know electrons actually go uh, negative and positive, but we still just refer to conventional current going positive and negative most of the time. Now. Down here we have a reverse bias diode right there. The uh, cathode to the positive side of the supply, this is a 5 volt supply and that's what I have this power supply set to right now, 5 volts. That's the ground symbol right there. So usually you put that to the negative supply for uh, most circuits these days. You declare that 0 volts, the negative side right there. And then the positive side of the supply is the voltage difference right there. So if it's 5 volts, that's a 5 volt difference. So this is wired to not conduct. Now we will uh, come over here. You can see that the uh, band is to the uh, negative side of the power supply. And we have to look at the power supply for uh, this demonstration. I'll move the uh, Zener diode. And uh, there you can see, we got about 25 milliamps of current flowing. Some of that is the LED though. There you can see we got uh, much less current now. 20 milliamps though, still. So still quite a bit. If I yank the diode, there you can see that it went to zero milliamps. So I turned it around. Now it's reverse bias. There's still no current flow. So it's blocking current because it's reverse bias. So here you can see, should be able to see that uh, gray band right there. Looks like it's showing up a little bit better in that direction. But in case that's the positive side, and then that's the cathode, the anode over there to uh, the negative side, that's reverse bias. It's not conducting right there. So in any case, when you have diodes like this, Make sure you check the uh, part number. I wrote a little note down here. You gotta check the part number because they all have different limitations and stuff. So you gotta keep everything within the limitations. So look up the part number and then it's a uh, data sheet if it has one or else just look up the uh, voltages and current that it can handle. So now we come to the LED. I removed the uh, rectifier diode because we are going to raise the voltage. We can handle 9 volts with this, but it'll still light up with 5 volts, as you can see there. The LED, if you have not trimmed the leads, the cathode should be shorter than the anode. Anode should be longer. 
This particular one, I don't know how well the uh, camera will pick it up, has a little flat edge though as well at the uh, cathode side right there. So not all of them do though. Sometimes the rim is uh, uniform all the way around. But uh, a lot of them, they have a flat edge at the uh, cathode. So that's one way to tell if you already uh, trimmed the leads or something. And then there's ways to test it too, but we're not gonna go into that in this video. So in any case, I showed what would happen. Nine volt uh, battery, I don't think is very common anymore, but uh, some people power their circuits. That's what I used when I first made videos. So on the positive side of the supply, resistor doesn't have to be on the more positive side. It doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter what direction you put the resistor either. It's not polarized. They can be in either order, as long as the uh, LED, because generally it's almost always forward bias. You usually always want it to light up when you apply power. So as long as it's in the right direction, it doesn't matter if it's there or there, as long as it's forward bias. But in any case, there you can see, you just make a electrical connection like that. So the uh, longer lead there towards more positive, shorter there. Uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to look at it with the breadboard though. So here we got it. And I got the uh, power supply. So I can set this to any voltage I want up to its maximum voltage, which I think is 35 volts. But in uh, any case, since I got rid of the uh, 220 ohm resistor powering something, now we can go up to 9 volts because we got a 470 ohm resistor. And there you can see, as I raise the voltage, a lot more current flowed. So, the LED, just like the rectifier dial, has a forward voltage. Takes a little bit of voltage before it will start conducting. That's about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts for most rectifier diodes if they're silicone. So, there's other versions that uh, take a little less voltage. But in any case, it's probably 0 0.7 volts forward bias for the rectifier dial. It's probably close to 2 volts for the uh, red LED and if we put a blue LED we'll see a little less voltage right there so you won't know that from the schematic that's just something you gotta learn and I'm trying to wire it while I'm looking at the camera that was the problem and there you can see it takes a little more voltage to get the blue LED lit up and so we saw a little drop right there so you don't get any of that information from the schematic you just have to learn about that when you learn about the components so in any case that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting into the screen. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. I have links down in the description. But just watching videos helps out a ton. Thanks to everybody that does that. I'll see you in the next video.